Karen Ryan, Realtor with Long & Foster in Reston, Virginia. I'm Brian Hope with Prosperity Home Mortgage. So we're here today to give you an update and uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about the market today and then also about rates and, um, and um, mortgage lending. So um, right now, as you know, the market um, is competitive, but we also have a lot of opportunities out there. Um, particularly, I wanted to start out today talking about a recent client I had who was a very young first-time home buyer. Um, he and I met initially, we discussed what some of his goals and criteria were, were, what some of the top three things he was looking for, where he was flexible, where he really needed to have that requirement. So we went out and looked, and um, we looked for a few weeks, and he finally decided on this one property, um, and it was his first offer, and we got it, and it was great. So we talked a lot about uh, what was really important to him and how to present that, understanding what the seller was looking for. But one of the very first things that I did was to make sure my client met Brian and talked to him. So Brian, can you address that a little Absolutely. bit? Absolutely. So you know, as Karen mentioned, we won that offer, first property found. Yeah. Um, and, and part of the reason we were able to do that is because the client was introduced to me as the lender very early on in that stage. All right, so one of the biggest things that I get asked is, when should we introduce our, our buyers to a lender or introduce them to a bank? Um, and the real answer is, it, it's never too early to do that. Um, in Karen's case, she did a great job of bringing him up to me in the way, way beginning, months before, I think it was either a month or two before we even went out. So what I was able to do is start that conversation, see what he qualified for, see how high he could go, what his budget was, and not only start gathering the documents to get him a pre-approval, but I was able to get him into underwriting and have at that point a fully underwritten pre-approval letter. Um, a fully underwritten commitment letter, in fact, which is better than a pre-approval letter. Definitely. So when we went to submit that offer, ours was at the tippy top of, gosh, probably five or six other offers at the yeah. time, because it was yeah. so competitive. And I was able to tell that listing agent, hey, our client has already been through underwriting. You know, this is not a pre-approval letter. I have all the documents, underwriting to approve the file, so the financing piece of that offer doesn't, you don't need to worry about it at all. So that was a big thing for us in winning that deal. And again, as it comes back to, you know, when do you get the client in? As early as possible, that's gonna help you guys succeed and help somebody win offers in this really competitive market that we're still in today. Right, and the, the client was so excited because, I'll have to be honest, he's a young gentleman and he had heard nothing about how, about how competitive it was and he probably wasn't going to have to get an offer, so we were ecstatic. And one of the things that Brian and I work uh, well together to do, and he's a great advisor, is when we get down to the part where we're submitting an offer, if there's an impact where we might potentially uh, waive contingencies, whether that be a home inspection or an appraisal, we discuss that with Brian because if we need to know what the financial impact of that could be on the buyer so they fully understand that when they go into making the offer. And it, the, the biggest key there is every client, every person, right, is different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where starting that conversation again is so important because waiving the financing in our, in our client's case, we were able to do, right? We were able to get them through underwriting, have that conversation and say this piece is no longer necessary in the contract that's gonna help you. Yeah. For others, that may not be the case. For others, we may not be able to waive the appraisal contingency, right? right? Because they don't have extra funds to cover the difference mm -hmm. if there is a low appraisal. Right. But other buyers may be able to do that. Right. And so that's where you have to kind of go through all of those details and see how we can package together the strongest offer in this market, uh, which obviously we were able to do, right. but every person's different. Sure. Um, and so that's sure. where it's, it's about looking at all the details, getting them ready and that way we have the best chance of winning the offer and again this is just really competitive time and especially too we've seen we're, and we talked about this in, in the past about how sometimes people will have to put in an escalation clause but it's really understanding from a financial impact what that means to you for uh, escalation mm -hmm. and if you're fully prepared and a lot of that is understanding that understanding the financial obligations so, you know, we talked about him being a first time home buyer, but this really applies to people across the board, not just him. Right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. there's, so there are first time home buyer programs, mm -hmm. but everybody should be you know, going forward with this type of mindset um, of being prepared and, and, and getting in early. The, the hardest thing to do in this market is get into a lender the day you go to buy a house, right? So you, you, you're driving around, 
you find a beautiful place you want to make an offer on it and you haven't spoken with a lender yet. Right. Because then you're in scramble mode. Um, you're probably not going to be able to go through all of those steps that you need. You certainly can't get through underwriting in one day. And so it's, it's going to be really difficult to package together an offer that's strong enough and, and one that everybody's on the same page about and win it. Um, because it is so competitive. So you know, this, this applies for everybody across the board, whether you're a first time home buyer, you're an investor, you're looking for a, a vacation home, uh, it, it's all the same as of right now. And I don't see it necessarily getting any less competitive than no. before. And selling, selling agents look for that because they do come to you when you extend that offer and say, well, how good is your person's financing? And, mm -hmm. You know, they want to talk to Brian, everything that he's just mentioned. So it's so critical to get in there first and make sure it's not just the letter, it's everything else that goes along with that. So I wanted to mention one more thing to you is, um, you know, in this market, we always try to look at the top three things that people, or whatever, the top four things are critical that um, you want to communicate with your client um, as a buyer, what's really important. But what are they flexible on? Are they flexible maybe on the neighborhood or if it needs a little paint or if the bathrooms need to be upgraded. So how do you approach that with clients when you know that they have a certain amount of money to, uh, to go up to, but then how they could, if they get an off, if they make an offer, it's maybe a little less than the top of where they're kind of looking for in the range, and then they might need some money to do those improvements. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's, you know, with, with the inventory, uh, I want to say short inventory that we still have, you may not, that the house that you put an offer on may not check every single box, right? You may not like the paint color. You may want to replace something in the bathroom. You may want to add an addition. Um, and so there are options on the financing side to be able to still go in and say, I think this is the house for us, but we want to still make some improvements. And you can make you know, an offer and you can do what's called a renovation loan. Um, renovation loans are available for anybody, whether you're a first time home buyer um, or you're purchasing an investment home, doesn't matter. Um, I typically recommend that loan for people that are doing a little bigger projects. Sure. Right, so some, not something that's you know, you're about, not cosmetic paint. or paint yeah. or yeah. adding a railing or something, right. but bigger projects, finishing a basement, um, mm -hmm. doing an addition, something like that. Right. Um, but, but for those smaller projects, what you can always do as an option is purchase the home. Once you get in, mm -hmm. um, we can do and add what's called a home equity line of credit. So we can either do that on top of your purchase when you're working with the bank and, and financing company, or you can do that after you purchase. Um, it all depends on your timing, it all depends on what you're looking to do. Um, and they, so they can add what's called a home equity line of credit. The good thing about where we are today is, and knock on wood if I can find any, is the, the home equity lines of credit are coming into play more. It was really hard to get one during the beginning of COVID because it was, it was a loan that not everybody used too much. The banks kind of put that, pushed that off to the yeah. side. Now more and more people are wanting to use them, so they're coming back. There's more and um, there's more of to fix things too. Correct, so, yeah. so again, you, you, know, you may not, it's, it's, it's hard to find the home that checks every right. single box off your list, but if you check eight or nine out of 10, right. that's pretty good. Right. And if those other one or two can be fixed with a HELOC or a renovation loan, right. We're all ears, and we can help with that. And that's why it's so important to work with your, communicate with your agent, to make sure we understand what it is. It's really critical, and where you have some flexibility. Well, Brian, thanks again today. You have an upcoming seminar, right? I do. So again, there's a seminar coming up uh, next Thursday, August 12th. It's going to be a Zoom seminar uh, from 6 to 7:30 p.m. So a, a great opportunity for first-time home buyers, people that haven't bought a, a home in a while, and want to get ideas to what the process is like. Um, I talk about building credit, I talk about low down payment options, um, and again, just the process, what we've kind of gone through yeah, today, but right. in a little more detail. Um, so that's taking place next Thursday, August 12th, 6 to 7.30. Um, if you're interested, you know, we can share information, I'll yeah. get the Zoom link out, and uh, hopefully see some people there. So thanks again, I appreciate your time today. We both um, uh, hope and wish you uh, happy buying, and uh, we would love to be able to help you and uh, provide you some more information. I'm Karen Ryan from Long Foster and Reston. I'm Brian Hope with Prosperity. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye.